Thank you, Jennifer, Miranda, Keisha, Veronica, Jessica, Tisha, Lauren, Ingrid, Leslie, Caroline, Lisa, and Danielle for another great week of discussion in week four. Appreciated your insights and interactions. This is a challenging discussion. It's challenging because just like in real life, we don't know everything. And we especially don't know what Kevin's intentions are, what his motivations are. One of the things that is really important when we approach a case like this, whether it's in a class or in real life, is to try to determine the facts as accurately as possible. Now, in this case, we don't know if there are any rules or policies or procedures for this company because it's, done, it's not disclosed in the case. So we really can't say Kevin is breaking the rules. Kevin is not following procedures because we don't know. We don't know if there is anything written down. We don't know if there is an employee handbook. And to say, well, all, of it, all companies have employees handbooks, uh, lots of small businesses just, well, they don't. So this little real estate company, is it possible that there's not a whole set of written policies and procedures? Is it possible that there is no written down rule? Don't let non-employees use the copy or the phone. It is quite possible that that, that that written policy does not exist. So we don't know. We can't say Kevin's breaking the policies. We don't know. What we do know is that the owner asked Kevin to limit other people from outside, other people from the community using the copier or the phone. She did not say stop. She did not say under no circumstances shall any non-employee use our copier or our phone. She said limit it because it's costing us money. Now, some people would say since Kevin continued to let people use the copier and the phone that he was disregarding the employer's instructions and being insubordinate. Several of you said that. Uh, Jessica said he's being insubordinate. Tisha said that he's being unethical and insubordinate. Um, others of you said he would clearly benefit from, from some ethics training because he needs to change this behavior. Keisha and Leslie pointed that out. But is he being insubordinate? Insubordinate's kind of a drastic word to use. That's when someone is deliberately and and, and uh, aggressively going against the orders of a superior. I'm not sure that's what's happening here. I mean, Caroline says, you know, it's the employer's duty to clearly explain what the expectations are. And this was not the clearest expectation. And others of you said, well, you know, Caroline, Jennifer, Danielle, and Ingrid were, you know, Kevin's Kevin seems to have good intentions. His motivation is to be welcoming to the community and create a good reputation for the real estate office in the community so that you know, people will, will make referrals to the company. Does that sound like insubordination? He's clearly not doing this for himself, or it doesn't appear to be like he's doing it for himself. And Danielle says, Kevin, Kevin seems to have a good heart. So is insubordination the right word is immediately going to ethics training the right course or as Miranda suggests and several others suggested maybe we have another one-on-one -on -one with Kevin and try to explain to him what the situation is and you see I don't think the facts match up with Kevin deliberately trying to undermine the company especially because this is not a huge cost I mean unless the you know, unless the local meatpacking plant down the road is bringing over 10,000 copies to make every month, chances are, from the way the description is, this is, you know, a few, you know, a couple hundred copies a month. Even at 10 cents a copy, 200, cop 200 copies a month at 10 cents a copy, you know, that's $20. It's not a huge expense. If 20 bucks a month is going to drive the real estate business under, they've got bigger problems. The cost is marginal. As many of you pointed out, the real question is Kevin's loyalty and is he being insubordinate? 
And I guess one tool that I would suggest that you use in situations like this is to ask yourself, why would a decent, reasonable person do this? Even though it appears to be going against the owner's intentions, perhaps it's going against policies. We don't know that because we don't know if there are any policies, but perhaps it's also going against policies to ask yourself, why would a decent, reasonable person do that? That can reset some of the negative emotions that we naturally get when we see somebody doing something that appears to be wrong, that appears to be insubordination, that appears to be disregarding the rules. We ask ourselves that question, that can provide a reset and an opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to see more, to understand more about what's going on and perhaps to have a reset and resolve the situation in a way that really benefits everybody. So I encourage you to think about that question, how that might be useful in your lives. And if learning some skills along those lines is something that interests you, I would be happy to provide you with a copy of a book called Crucial Conversations from which that question is drawn. It's a very helpful book in terms of interacting with people in stressful situations. And I found it very useful in my work and life. I found it so useful that I went and took their, took their training uh, to explore the to topic more deeply. And again, I would be happy to send you a copy of that book if you ask for one. As we move into the discussion in week five, I encourage you to ask that question, why would a decent, reasonable person do this? And to closely look at the facts as we explore this very challenging case in week five. Thanks again for all your good work. If there is any way that I can be helpful to you, please send me an email, send me a text message, give me a call. I would be happy to interact with you in the way that is most helpful for you. Have a great week. Thanks.